Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all uh, around the world, and welcome to the latest in our Innovation Network webinar series. This is our short 30-minute need-to-know format, and I'm really uh, pleased and honored to be uh, joined today uh, by Dr. Peter Weil, the chairman of the Center for Information Systems Research uh, at, at MIT. And my role today is uh, a slightly shortened one compared to usual. Uh, because I'm also joined by my colleague, a lecturer uh, at MIT Sloan and Senior Director in Executive Education, Meg Regan. And Meg is actually going to serve as our, uh, as our moderator today. One last comment before I hand over to Meg. Uh, I see many of you are uh, writing to us in the chat. That's great to see. You do have the option of all panelists and attendees, not just all panelists, if you're putting things in the chat so everyone else can see what you're uh, commenting. Feel free to do that. Uh, I'm sure everyone would uh, welcome that engagement. So with that, over to you, Meg. Thanks so much, Peter. I'm so delighted to be joined here today by my colleague and friend, Peter Weil. As Peter her said, Peter is the chairman of the Center for Information Systems Research and also a senior research scientist here at MIT Sloan School of Management. He focuses on the role, value, and, uh, and governance of digitization in enterprises and their ecosystems. Peter has worked with the boards and executive committees of more than 50 companies globally on digital issues. Peter and I collaborate in designing and delivering executive programs for organizations focused on enterprise-wide digital transformation and increasing the digital savviness of executive teams and boards. In addition to digital savvy, his current research projects include digital business models, digital business transformation, digital partnering, replatforming, and domains. What I'd like to do with our time today is invite Peter to share an overview of his research on why digital savvy top management teams and boards pay off, and then engage in some conversation on the topic. And I know Peter has uh, something to share about uh, something that will be released soon. So Peter, over to you. Thanks, Meg. Uh, and thank you, Peter. Uh, hello, everybody. It's just so wonderful to be with you. I was just looking down the chat and we have people from some of my favorite places in the world, like Singapore, um, Hamburg, uh, oh, and Rio, uh, one of my very favorite places. So welcome, everybody. Uh, we also have people from uh, Newton and uh, much closer to MIT. Uh, I am uh, excited to share this new research with you. And as you can see in the middle of this slide, um, the article that uh, describes the research in more detail is coming out in Sloan Management Review uh, next week. It's called, Does Your C-Suite Have Enough Digital Smarts? And Sloan Management Review, or SMR as we call it, uh, is having a uh, free firewall, open firewall, a couple of days starting uh, on March 2nd and 3rd. So I'd love you to have a look at this article, but all the other amazing pieces of uh, writing and research that you'll find in Sloan Management Review. It's a uh, it's our uh, MIT's uh, Sloan's uh, journal, and we're very proud of it. I want to start with boards. Um, about three years ago, my MIT CISA colleague, Stephanie Warner, and a couple of board uh, members of listed companies in the United States were thinking about how the digital economy was really coming fast. And we were asking ourselves the question, are boards ready? You know, are they ready for what this is going to bring? Much faster innovation, um, more competitors, uh, cross industries, you know, the industry boundaries are going to collapse. Uh, and so we said, let's find out. Uh, so we did a, a piece of research uh, that was published in 2019 where we measured the digital savviness of every board member of a listed company in the US over a billion dollars. Uh, and just that is enough to tell you that digital disruption is coming, the, the kind of research you can do today. Uh, we identified the characteristics of digital board members. Uh, we identified keywords and we used machine learning to score every one of those board members uh, and then measure the performance of their companies. And what we found was about a quarter of the companies were ready. 24% uh, of boards were digitally savvy. Uh, and they had their companies much better performance, as you can see here. And that's just better financial performance than their competitors. But it's not just one digital savvy director that you need. 
it turns out that if you just have one, we don't see, excuse me, <coughs> we don't see any impact on performance. Uh, if you have two, we don't see any impact on performance. But when you have three, we see this step change in performance. And so when we did a series of interviews uh, with chairs of listed companies, we asked them that question and they said, oh yeah, yeah, we felt so good about putting a digitally savvy, our first uh, board member on, but no one listened to him or her. Uh, you know, they just uh, talked their own language. And then we had a second one and that was even better, but they just talked to each other in a language we didn't all really understand. And uh, it wasn't until we had three. And when we asked them, what was the big difference? of having a digitally savvy board, uh, there was a lot of agreement around this. The digitally savvy directors changed the risk conversation from evaluating project risk to business model risk. And, and, and that's really, I think, the big issue facing many companies. And so after we had presented that to a few boards, uh, one of the chairs of a very large uh, uh, bank in the US took me aside and said, you know, this is great, but are our management teams digitally savvy? Are they ready? And so we said, that's a great question. Let's take a look. So we replicated uh, the same methodology, changing the keywords a little bit, and I'll show you what we used in a moment. Uh, and what we found was an even more surprising and I think stark result. Uh, but as always, um, a stark result is an opportunity. Uh, and what we found was if you just look at big companies, you know, over 3 billion, Globally, this is about 70% of all global companies. So this is a global study. Uh, what we found was that only 7%, 7% of those companies had more than half of their top team, top management teams that were digitally savvy. And those companies outperformed the rest massively. And, and you can see the difference here. Uh, and so there's really large um, premiums, at least in this data, for having digitally savvy top management teams, which of course reflect, uh, are reflected in the rest of the organization. So you might be wondering, what did we mean by digitally savvy? So the way we attack this is we did a series of interviews of senior executives. Uh, then we analyzed companies we knew were digitally savvy and top performing to look at what were the characteristics of the bios of the senior executives. And then we did some statistical analysis and then we did that machine learning analysis again, uh, this time for a much bigger sample. And what we found that there was really four elements to digital savviness. And think about yourself as I described this or your CEO. And um, the first is impact, you know, understanding how digital will impact uh, the future of the company and the old change, organizational change required. The second is a good enough understanding of the technology itself, uh, AI, big data, IoT, mobile, et cetera, um, APIs, and, and what that means for business models, partnering, cyber risk, operations, customer experience. The third and probably the hardest is how to change the organization at scale. Uh, and so when to commit, when to experiment, when to partner, uh, what are the early indicators? How do you dashboard this? Um, those are challenging issues. And then finally, uh, the, the idea I mentioned earlier of talking about business model, then project risk. And so thinking, changing the way you strategize to bring technology, uh, to make technology a part or maybe your strategy. So, in identifying these four elements, we then found 251 key words or phrases that described a digitally savvy executive. Uh, and we then divided them into two, one around technology uh, and one around enterprise scale implementation. And then we looked for executives that had both. Uh, and what we found uh, was quite surprising that only 17% of top management team members were digitally savvy on, on our assessment and therefore uh, were in companies that outperformed uh, as you saw before. So first a recommendation is 
update your bio <laughs> because there's a lot of research being done by search firms and your own organizations to identify uh, who is digitally savvy and, and what that means for their, that organization. And the second thing to ask is, you know, how digitally savvy are you and how would you increase that? Uh, and how would you help your senior executive colleagues to increase their digitally savviness? So then we wanted to understand what is it that these top management teams that are digitally savvy do that makes a difference? You know, what do they do differently? Now I'm going to describe these and as I do, I'd like you, if, you have a, if you're in front of a, uh, a phone or a pen and paper, just to score your own company on these 10 items, uh, because I'm going to ask in a poll in a moment, just to give an overall percentage for all 10, not individuals. Uh, and so it'll just give you a quick benchmark, a quick and dirty benchmark of how you compare. So the way to read this diagram is that the rows are the 10 things that, <laughs> excuse me, digitally savvy top management teams do differently. And the columns represent the top quartile in digital savviness in the green, the good companies in this uh, sense. And then the um, red are the bottom quartile of the uh, top management team uh, digital savviness. Uh, so they're the ones that have work to do. And as you'll see big differences between the green and the red, as big as I've ever seen in, in all my years of doing research in this area. So the first thing that uh, these top management teams do differently is that they focus on results that will statistically at least predict future performance for them. And, and we found a very strong relationship between these three things and future financial performance. Uh, and so the first is innovation, uh, then cross-selling, uh, to make it easy for the customer. Uh, uh, so cross selling is a kind of old word for the idea that you meet more of the customer's needs. And then transforming the organization to be more digital, more self-serve, more automated. The second uh, set of uh, differentiators is practices. And these are very typical of digitally savvy companies, uh, rapid learning, modular, automated decision-making, so freeing up time for people to do more high value uh, tasks. And finally, leadership and culture. Uh, and here you see leadership style, digital culture, you know, thinking digital solutions, accountability, um, and also encouraging everyone to innovate. Uh, and so let's just take a look at a couple of examples. Um, here in innovation, we see percent of revenues from new offers introduced in the last three years. And you can see the massive difference. And one of the companies we studied was Schneider Electric, which is a global energy company that moved from selling uh, switches and air conditioning systems and components to selling energy efficiency. Uh, and their customers that use the service have much higher energy efficiency than the industry average. So really interesting innovation, but that idea of continuous innovation. And then how do you get that? Well, it's through rapid learning. Uh, in a digital world, we don't know what's gonna work. There's no playbook. So we have to test and learn. We have to have minimal viable products. We have to share lessons, evidence-based decision-making. And finally, the one that many executives find the hardest is moving from a kind of command and control, the world I grew up in, to much more of a coach and communicate because the speed at which uh, we're transforming, we can't go up and down the command and control structure every time. We need to uh, empower, coach and communicate, but also hold people accountable. And you can see in the greens and the reds, the big differences between those companies. So as you reflect on this and think about your own company, I'd like you to just ponder this question. And we're going to raise a poll now. Uh, and the question is, if you take all those 10 items, you know, just in your mind, or if you had a chance to score the individual ones, great. Uh, now you'll have to average it. What is your firm's percent effectiveness on the 10 characteristics of digital savviness? So we'll just launch the poll. And uh, we'll get our results up in a moment, but I'm going to uh, 
ask Meg to join me. Hi, Meg. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks. Nice to be here with you today. Uh, my pleasure, too. Uh, we'll get those results in a moment. So I, I'm just wondering, Peter, as the results are coming in, uh, are there some sectors that are, are doing better than others here? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and yes, um, the companies that uh, the sectors that are better in terms of our uh, analysis were the ones you'd expect um, in information, in media, uh, in technology. Uh, those companies, uh, on average, had around 30% uh, of their top management teams that were digitally savvy. And the ones that were really low were the ones you'd expect, uh, construction, agriculture, mining. But very surprising, Meg, and you and I have worked a lot in this sector, only 14% uh, of the uh, top management teams of financial services firms were digitally savvy. That, that's just a massive insight and opportunity. I see we have our results. Excellent. Okay. So pretty nice normal curve, Meg. Um, yeah. So round about um, a little bit higher, actually. Maybe these webinars are paying off. Uh, uh, the average is uh, 21 to 30. Uh, we saw about 17. Uh, and so one of the big, and we see here quite a flat distribution to the right, meaning to the higher end. So we have quite a few companies that are in the 50s and 60s. So they're really well placed uh, to take advantage of this. So it's not just the tech companies that, that need digital savvy boards and executives. That's right, yeah. Uh, in fact, um, when we did the analysis, we identified the top 10 companies in tech and in non-tech that were digitally savvy as well as um, in the top quartile of financial performance. Uh, and what we found, which was really interesting, was you, all the tech companies you'd expect were there, uh, but uh, there were lots of non-tech companies. Uh, and so just I'll mention a couple. Uh, Visa was one in the top 10 on both um, digital savviness and financial performance. Uh, but so was a company you'll know well, uh, Meg or anyone who lives in Boston, Duncan Brands. Um, yeah. Duncan Brands in 20, 2018 rebranded um, and invested heavily in technology. And just a year over, just over a year later, they had achieved over 13 million members of their loyalty program, DD Perks. But more interestingly for this discussion, 13% of their US sales were on mobile orders and payments, uh, pre-stored payments, not cards. And so mm -hmm. that was a really massive, and that's probably increased, I haven't talked to them since, but that's probably increased significantly since COVID. Mm -hmm. so, so does this journey end or, or, or is it ongoing? <laughs> well, as you and I know, having worked with a lot of companies, <laughs> uh, you know, once you're on the journey, you realize how far you have to go. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, I don't think it really ever ends. But as I mentioned with the boards, there's this step change in the first uh, you know, quartile of becoming digitally savvy. Mm -hmm. And you see a big difference. I think after that, it's more marginal uh, and you have to worry more about uh, the rest of the organization, of course. Mm -hmm. So as we're thinking about um, the importance of, of executives increasing their, uh, their digital savviness, are there some roles on the top management team that are uh, generally more digital savvy or need to be in these studies that you're, these companies that you're studying? So this blew me away. Um, I've spent most of my career working with um, senior executives, technology leaders. Uh, and what we found in this result was that there was no professional group you know, marketing, chief executive, CFO, CIO, that more than 50% of the population were digitally savvy, not even CIOs or CTOs. They were in the high 40s. 
And, and when we talked to a lot of executives, senior executives about that, they said, yeah, yeah, those folks have been focused on the back room, have been focused on keeping everything running, and they're not helping us with the enterprise change issues, and they're not uh, helping us with the strategic business model issues. Mm -hmm. So even CTOs and CIOs are in the high 40s. Uh, CEOs, 23% were um, digitally savvy, and having a CEO that's digitally savvy was a huge uh, impact. CFOs, only 14%, really big opportunities. Wow. CMOs, 23%. Um, so we found that there were six execs that statistically were correlated with better performance if they were digitally savvy, uh, the ones that I've just mentioned. But there's two or three others you would never have thought of. Um, now, marketing, of course, is important because you have to help the customers understand that you're a digitally savvy company and engage digitally. But comms, uh, the comms leader had a very big impact. If you were good, if you had a digitally savvy comms person, they could convince the employees or help the employees understand customers and most importantly, investors. Mm -hmm. But lastly, compliance was important too. Uh, you've got to do this in a compliance way. And if your compliance person's a doctor no, uh, then you really struggle with that test and learn part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So the so the opportunity here is is just amazing. How, tell me, Peter, how can executives increase their digital savviness? Yeah. So I think there's two ways. Um, one is self driven, uh, and the other are organizational programs. And I'll come back to you on the organizational programs because you and I have had a lot of experience with this. But self driven is really interesting. Uh, so one of the people we worked with and we quote him in the article is the CEO of Semex, uh, Fernando Gonzalez. That's the one of the largest cement companies in the world, um, headquartered in Monterey, Mexico. And they have launched uh, two or three years ago now an amazing um, improvement in their customer experience called Semex Go to help um, the manager of a construction site order cement pick the right one, pay for it and track its delivery. And the CEO, when I met him several years ago said, you know, he really just wanted to become more digitally savvy. And so he created a program for himself and then for the executive team about how to do that. And that was education, visiting companies, reading one-on-one -on -one tutorials, all kinds of things. And now the Semex Go um, effort is uh, and, and experience accounts for 45% of their sales in two or three years, which is an incredible uh, improvement. And it shows you how digital, when it's good, catches on and, and how someone uh, who has the uh, foresight can design the future uh, for themselves by education. But Meg, you and I have worked with a number of programs and, and uh, companies across the globe. What do you think is the most important thing for a company when they're designing uh, a program to increase the digital savviness of their executives? Well, I think, um, as you mentioned earlier, Peter, part of the secret sauce of the digital savviness is how that understanding is applied in dialogue and, and decision making, um, especially with cross-functional teams such as boards and, and, and top management teams. So number one is having strong executive sponsorship right, uh, executives that who are gonna partner with you to help to customize the program and uh, think agilely about the discussions and the decisions that are made during those, 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 uh, those facilitated discussions and, and, and sessions. Um, one of the things we find is, is really powerful, important it, to these types of dialogues and decision-making is really having a common set of frameworks and vocabulary across an organization. Um, yeah, most importantly, but even starting with just uh, boards and executive teams, right? Level setting on an understanding what some of these key technologies and terms mean and what they mean for that company um, and moving to having a critical mass of people in the organization who understand those frameworks and use that same vocabulary. And, and Meg, you know, I love the way this gets tested when we do polling in senior executive teams because it surfaces the assumptions. And you might remember one CEO saying to their CFO in the middle of one of those, you don't really believe that, do you? <laughs> uh, you know, so surfacing the assumptions that are in people's heads so you can talk about it is great. 
but I love the projects. You know, tell us, uh, you know, what you've learned about the projects because that makes it real. Sure. Really, we believe at MIT that you don't truly understand something until you try to apply it. And we feel that it's a great opportunity to uh, practice that application on a real business challenge. So we've done this in a number of ways. Um, as you know, Peter, uh, we've done some reverse uh, mentoring and, and project application, and we've done small teams, um, really focusing on challenges that are important to the organization and hopefully create some value whilst also cementing the learning and making it easier for um, executives to explain these things to others and bring others into this type of way of thinking and working. Great. Yeah, yeah. So what about the rest of the organization? How do we bring them along on this journey and how do we help them see this as an opportunity and, and not a threat as, as maybe some people start to feel as you move down into the organization? Yeah, it's such a good point. Um, we see two pathways for companies to create new digitally enabled business models. One is to spin something off to be separate. And we see that with car companies with their mobility. Uh, and we see the other, which is to say, we've got to take the original organization and um, you, you know, keep the good stuff and transform. And so a DBS, which is the uh, bank based in Singapore, number one bank in the world by many metrics, decided that they wanted to keep the same people that they had. They didn't want to change over their staff to be more digitally savvy. So they put in a huge effort uh, of more than 50 programs to increase the digital savviness of everybody from the board members right down to the tellers and folks who engage with customers directly. Uh, and so they were self-service. Uh, they were often taught by internal expert on the subject and there were ratings and there was all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, superstars uh, within the company. And uh, it was something you could do uh, you could do part-time. Uh, but I think the biggest change was Piyush Gupta, the, the CEO of DBS, said he wanted the company to act like a you know, 23, 24,000 person startup. And so that meant that everybody in the company had a second hat and once a week want, had to do something around innovation. Uh, and so that really changed the culture. And, and you can see with the kind of innovation they've done, particularly around ecosystems, how that took off. Well, that's a that's a great um, note to to end on. We're we're just about at time here. Um, the fact that it's possible for a big, well-established company by DBS to make that like DBS to make that kind of transformation uh, gives a lot of companies out there hope. <laughs> Exactly. So if you'd like to learn more about this research and other research carried out at the Center for Information Systems Research, please visit the website. Um, it's here on this slide. And please be on the lookout for uh, a program, upcoming program, Becoming a More Digital Savvy Board Member. Dates are being finalized now. Thank you all so much. And thank you, Peter. It was a, it was a, it was a wonderful thing to be here with you today. Thanks, Meg. Always a pleasure. Peter, thank you. And thanks to everyone out there. I just saw uh, greetings from a friend in Madrid. Uh, hi, B. Uh, and uh, look forward to uh, talking with you all. Please contact us directly. All the best.